Hello everybody, Gaming Psychologist here. Uh, I quickly went in and did a edit as a bookend. Um, I'm very sorry that this video took so long to come out. I had to deal with some editing problems. Um, those were mostly related to podcast episodes that prevented me from getting to this, this video in particular. I had some kind of weird rendering issue. I have no idea what it was. I've rendered hundreds of videos on this PC at this point. But this one just decided that it was going to be corrupt. So I actually had to re-render it three times before I got it properly. I considered going in and re-recording the whole thing. But I did not script this episode. Uh, I used kind of a bullet-pointed list to come up with my reasons. And then just expounded upon those. So it would have been very difficult to have redone this entire episode. And then finally, I had some YouTube upload problems. I have no idea what happened when I actually tried to upload this video. I think YouTube was just having problems itself because I had the same thing with when I tried to upload during the same time frame. Uh, the last episode of the of Video Game Logic podcast and I had to upload it twice before it processed through properly. So I don't know what was up with that, but here we are. Why I love Eve Online. So without further ado, I shall return you back to the original recording. Howdy there folks, Gaming Psychologist here with the reasons I love EVE Online. I don't have a snappy post or pre-recorded title for this episode. I figured that I would come up with a title for it once I actually finished it. Since it's mostly uh, just stuff that's off the top of my head. I've got a little bit of a list here that we're going to go through, but a lot of this is going to be unscripted and just stream of consciousness. So here we go. There's a number of reasons why I love EVE Online and have become basically an addict to the game. I just recently uh, subbed for a whole year on my primary account and I'm putting back my budgeted weekly uh, fund money to sub my secondary account for a whole year. And that works out to be about 250 bucks that, I've, that I will be putting into EVE. That doesn't include any Plex that I have bought or will buy which Plex stands for Pilot's License Extension. It's a way that you can pay for your game time in-game by buying it with in-game currency. Or it's just a different way to pay for your game time outside of game. Or it's a way to fund stuff in-game. For example, you buy it outside of game with real money, then sell it in on the, uh, the marketplace in-game and get tons of in-game money. So it's a great way to, to get startup capital for yourself if you don't have the time to invest into building up your first billion isk so that you can actually start doing some real, uh, I wouldn't say in-game content, but some real big content. So that's a lot of money that I've spent on this game and probably will continue to spend on this game. And in doing so, I had to sit down and really think about it before I committed it because the only game I've ever committed this much time and money to in the past is World of Warcraft. Both games are MMOs, both have appeals for different reasons, and both had different reasons for why I played them. I played World of Warcraft when I was in high school mostly. I still play it from time to time with my mom. Uh, if you listen to my podcast, I've mentioned that she is the biggest WoW addict I know. But I really sat down and got to thinking about why I wanted to invest so much time and money into this game. And I came up with a list of reasons for why I love the game. And I just like would like to share that with you. Also, it get, kind of gives me an excuse because that means that I'm using some of this for work as opposed to all this game time to just be lazy. But without further ado, let us get started. The first reason that I love EVE so much is the freedom of the game itself. A lot of games, MMOs or RPGs or whatever, will build themselves as being an open world where you can do and anything that you can imagine. And while technically that's never true of any game, except maybe Second Life, EVE gets the closest to any game that I've ever played. There are tons and tons and tons of things to do, which we'll get into a little bit more later, but just kind of a general overview of things is you can be a miner. You can be an industrialist, so you build things for people, either to sell on the open market or for, to fulfill buy orders that corporations might have. You can be an explorer, um, exploring in known space and unknown space, looking for relics and artifacts or caches of high level resources or, or things like that. You can be a PVE player, which can look a number of different ways, but 
essentially in PvE, you're either running missions against AI-controlled opponents, or you are exploring around looking for these things called combat zones, which can take a number of forms, but all in all, you're, you're just doing things that don't involve fighting or dealing with other players. You can be a PvPer, which also has a number of branches on it. You can either fight other players in what's called low security space, where there's no police to come help the innocent players that you attack. You can be what's called a, a ganker, which if you're not familiar with MMOs in general, ganking is basically where one high level player purposefully kills a low level player to loot their stuff or just for shits and giggles. You can be what's called a war decker, which is kind of an, uh, an officially sanctioned form of ganking where that you declare war against a corporation in high sec or high security space so you can specifically attack and kill them without being worried about police interference. You can be a corporation person, which is kind of a vague statement, but either you can create a corporation or you could work for other corporations as a form of a, a spy or if you've been following the chronicles that I've talked about on the podcast, you know of all of my struggles in the corporation that I was a member of and how that we have been planning a coup to take them down. So, and those are just some of the ways that you can play. There's lots of people that if you go to the subreddit or the forums for the games that have come up with interesting little ways to play and specific things that they do, like planet colonizers, who they focus entirely on the planetary materials you can get from the game. Uh, station traders, which is a bit like a, a real-life stockbroker. You sit at your desk all day and you buy low and sell high and, and do that sort of thing just in a station. And You can be a pirate. You can uh, attack without the initial intent to kill in order to extort money or items from players who are in vulnerable positions, like in low security space. So there's just so much that you can do in this game. There's so much that you can move into. And while there is a certain degree of specialization that comes from long-term intense training on a specific skill set, in general, almost right off the bat, you can start doing almost all of these things. Or you can train into the basic skills to do them in a relatively short amount of time. Now, in case you're unaware, EVE does require you to train skills in real time, which means that you set a skill in your training queue to train, and it will take a certain amount of time, like an hour or a day or for some of the really intense high level skills you might be looking at a month or more of skill training time to train this level of a skill now it trains in the background so it doesn't matter if you're logged in or not but within a week of play time you can have skilled into all of the basic things that you can do in game and start figuring out what you want to do if you're a new player and speaking of players figuring out what they want to do that's a nice lead into my second point of why i love eve so much and it's I don't think this is a real word, but the player drivenness of the game itself. Everything in the game, well, not everything, 99.99% of everything in the game is run entirely by the players. There are a few things that developers put in place, such as skill books. Most skill books can be bought from NPC stations. A few of them have to be found through exploration and stuff, but I did say, you know, 99.99%. So, uh, Everything in the game is pretty much run by players. Uh, the game is driven by the economy, which industrial characters, manufacturers, and miners to some degree control. Uh, if you buy anything, except for a few specific parts that you can receive as drops from NPCs, it was built by a player. It, mining and, and industrialist is my character type. So I mine resources, occasionally buy the, the ones that I'm lacking in, and then build stuff and sell it on market. I sell ships and ship equipment like guns and mining lasers and drones and a number of other things. And if I didn't do that, if there weren't, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of players who didn't do that, the game would be a very dry place to be because you could only use the bare level of equipment that you get from NPCs and the occasional special ship that you receive as a, a mission reward. And the game would be a boring place. Thankfully, there are lots of people like me who like to do that and who like to drive the economy, but this level of player interaction and player control extends to other realms of the game. Uh, there are player alliances, which are groups of corporations that band together in order to 
control null sec space and null sec space is kind of the unexplored area of space where that there are no NPCs outside of pirates there's no empire control in, in those systems so everything there is 100% run by the players stations that are built are built by the players ships that are built by the players so on and so forth and these are huge swaths of space you can go look at maps online that show you you know how many of the six or seven thousand systems that are in the game are controlled by player corporations and player alliances and there's quite a few it's something like last time i checked 40 or 50 percent of the space in the game is controlled by players with another 25 or 30 percent controlled by npcs and then the rest is kind of lawless space but that level of player control as far as i know is not present in any other game the players are literally shaping the political sphere of the game and there are political wars that come up. EVE Online is famous for having these huge publicized battles where people lose thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in real world money if you convert the loss in the game since they have Plex, which, you know, like I said, bought for real money can be sold for in-game currency. If you convert that back, you can see how much money and time was lost when these wars happen. And that's all player driven by player politics. The last great war was started by one alliance taxing another alliance too much. And they got into a huge thousand plus player war, which was mostly decided by the outcome of one battle. But still, it's just amazing to see these things happen when they don't happen in other games. And all of that is really down to a lack of GM babysitting, which is another thing that I love about the game. You know, in most games, if somebody steals all of your stuff or ganks you repeatedly, you complain and actions are taken to protect you and players like you going forward. Or perhaps you'll receive compensation like, oh, those players were really mean to you. We don't want that to happen here. But in EVE Online, that doesn't happen. If you complain about that, someone goes, so? You should have been more careful with who you, who you were trusting or where you were going or you should have paid more attention. And the GMs are like, yeah, that really sucks for you. Better luck next time. And as much as that sometimes can suck, I think that this game would be not even half as good if the GMs were constantly babysitting. Let's take a walk back in time in EVE Online. And this was from before I played, but I'm aware of this situation. There used to be an alliance called Band of Brothers. And at the time, they were the largest alliance in the game. They controlled dozens, perhaps even into the hundreds of null sec systems huge thriving alliance of course when you're at the top everyone wants to knock you down but no one could take them down on military might alone they had just too much too much territory too many resources all that sort of thing so a rival alliance sent in a spy and this spy worked diligently for i don't know how long months probably we're not sure and there's conflicting reports but he spent a long time gaining the trust of the alliance and one day he had uh, a high enough rank or that he can make alliance level decisions and in the span of less than five minutes this one player took down the biggest alliance at the time in eve history by hitting one button disband alliance and then disband corporation so i guess two buttons and in other games players would have complained the the ceos of the guilds which are guild masters in other games would have complained and Probably the GMs would have went, oh man, that really sucks. Yeah, that guy was exploiting you. Sorry, we'll reinstate everything. We'll roll the clock back. But instead, CCP, which is the developers of EVE, pointed and said, ha ha, this is awesome. Players are doing exactly what we want them to do, whatever they want. And overnight, the landscape changed, and those changes are still being felt to this day. It basically led to the rise of the Goon Squad, which is still a powerful alliance today. And this has been five or six years ago. So the lack of GM babysitting allows players to really explore the darker side of what they can do. And that makes the game a lot more interesting for it. Going beyond gameplay though, going beyond game mechanics, we get to the lore and science behind the EVE universe, which I love. I'm a huge lore nerd. And I've spent hours and hours reading the, the Chronicles, the EVE Chronicles and the Lexicon, and have scoured the wikis for information on the history of the game and there's so much behind it there is a storyline in the game that you can follow 
there's actually a few storylines in the game that you can follow. And all of this lore is discoverable in-game, but it's all listed outside the game. And it's just fascinating to watch the creation and the fall of the various empires and to understand the relations, the relationships between them. There's a specific tab you can go look at on your character sheet, which is your relations with various factions in the game. And as a gameplay mechanic, that makes sense in general. You know, you have relations with different factions, which gives you different security statuses and access to different places or items or whatever. All of that stuff, it makes sense. But you can go look under the hood of the game and go, oh, that's why these alliances hate me when I like these other alliances. And it's just a brilliant, beautiful backdrop of information that doesn't affect gameplay if you don't know it, but adds so much to the richness and the deepness of this world, which on the outside just looks like cool looking spaceships fighting each other. And then there's the science under the hood. And Eve is a science fiction game, but the difference in science fiction and science fantasy, which a lot of people don't realize this, is that science fiction is at least based on real technology and projections of where real technology could go. We have evidence, even now, that the creation of a warp bubble is possible. It's, you can go look it up. There's been some science or some testing that's been done on creating Star Trek-like warp bubbles. And they've proven that they can be created in small scale in a vacuum. So the warp drive, which functions in EVE based on a warp bubble, is possible, theoretically, at least until proven otherwise. There are some fantasy aspects of the game, such as visible spectrum lasers and stuff like that, but mostly a lot of, a lot of the ships use either projectile weapons, just kind of futuristic versions, with uh, specific ammo types or railgun technology, which is real. Railgun text or railguns actually exist today. Just they're in small testing facilities trying to figure out the best ways to use them and what they can be used for. But a railgun is a real thing. These ships use standard ion, ion propulsion drives, which they've been ramped up. But an ion drive is a real thing that's existed for a long time. Go look at satellites that are used by space agencies, NASA in particular, for long-range missions and things like that, they use an ion drive. And much of the technology is based on real-world real world stuff, and you can see the connections to it. Even things that seem completely far-fetched, like faster than light communication and stuff like that, you can go look up some of the real science behind ideas of like quantum entanglement and stuff like that, and they're all theories that have been, to at least some extent, tested or proven with math, prototypes in some cases where they, they do exist, but it's all based in real world stuff and just that lends that extra bit of goodness to it. Like I would be okay if there were aliens and space lasers and all this ridiculous stuff, kind of like Elite Dangerous. A lot of stuff from Elite Dangerous is just made up and it sounds and looks cool. Or I should say the Elite games in general, but Eve isn't like that. I mean, sure, there's a few things that seem a little far-fetched, but Probably 95% of the tech and lore in the game is based around real-world science. Just, what if this real-world science turned out to work this way? And I love that. And all of that really adds up to my favorite thing about the game, is just how cool it is. I know a lot of people refer to EVE as spreadsheet simulator. I'm guilty of doing that myself. But there's so much more to the game than just staring at spreadsheets and figuring out where the most efficient place to mine is or the most efficient thing to build is. Just some days I just go out and I explore. I go through known space, unknown space, I go through wormholes, and just look at how cool this world is that they've built. These beautiful backgrounds that, I almost said skyboxes, but they're not skyboxes. You can go anywhere you want in space. There's nothing holding you back. The quickest way to get from point A to point B is through a junk gate or by warping directly to a, a station or a body or whatever, but you can just point your ship in a direction hit your micro warp drive and speed away at you know thousands of meters a second and just go check out anything that you see. And sometimes you stumble upon some, some really neat stuff out there. Occasionally you stumble upon something in what's called dead space, which is just areas of space where that you don't think that there's anything. It might have a scannable location that if you were doing some exploration you might find something. But you can just wander out there if you want. Go find it. Sometimes you stumble upon stuff that has been left by another player that you could only scan down using spe specific probes. But every once in a while it happens. You'll run across a wreck 
or a ship that's just sitting out there and you'll think to yourself, well, I wonder what happened here. Because aside from, from containers and, and wrecks, which do disappear eventually, other objects that players leave in the world will stay there for a long time. I want to say it's 30 days for most objects that are left in space by players, aside from um, containers and wrecks, which I think they disappear within two hours. But sometimes you'll just stumble upon stuff, and you're like, wow, what is this doing out here? Where's it from, and what's its purpose? And it's just so cool to just wander out into the middle of nowhere and just see what you can find. Plus, like I said, it's beautiful. It's I mean, gorgeous. I play this. I play Eve on... How many PCs am I up to now? Four different PCs. And even on the lowest graphic settings, on my crappy rendering PC, which has got a lot of processing horsepower, but not a lot of graphical processing power, the suns and the stars and the detail on the asteroids and planets and ships are still head and shoulders above of, of almost anything that I've seen. I just cannot express how wonderful this game looks in its current state and how fun it is and how wondrous it can be. And I know I sound like I'm a little infatuated and maybe that's just the addict, the Eve addict in me talking, but every time I log into this game, no matter what it is that I'm doing, I find myself enjoying the game in new ways all the time. I still enjoy mining. I still enjoy production. I do enjoy exploring. Not as much of a fighter. It can be fun, but it's not what I like to spend most of my time doing. But every day I log in and I find a new reason to enjoy the game. Or I revisit a reason that I haven't spent some time with in a while. And every time I just go, man, I am enjoying this so much. I've had a couple of friends join the game to play with me. Like friends that I know from the real world. I've met a lot of cool people in the game already. And as I continue to play, I'm sure I'll meet more. But if you have any interest in playing EVE, sign up for the two-week free trial actually message me first either on twitter or in a comment on this video or in a letter to vgl podcast tell me you want to play tell me why you want to play and let me send you an invite because if you get invites from players you get a three-week trial as opposed to a two-week trial and just come play with me i'll invite you to my fleet or to my corporation and help train you in the difficult aspects in playing the game for the first time and let's have a blast together and if you like the game I'll give you some startup cash. I'll uh, I'll give you some ships. And we can fly away and explore the stars together. I think that wraps up this gushing video of Over Eve Online. Which at this point is at about 23 minutes. Editing may cut that down a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you have enjoyed the pretty backdrops of the Eve footage that is going to be behind it. It's just going to be some random footage that I record. And, uh... I hope to see you again next time. Until then, Gaming Psychologist, signing off.